Okay, this, um, the event is, is not yet over. I, I'm really looking forward to this next little bit of the event, but we do have a little bit of stage management to do. So um, while we're doing that stage management, I'd like to invite um, Bridget and Marianne to, to come to the stage. Art and culture, we were making the case, is an inherent part of prosperity, even for those who are less privileged than anyone else in society. Um, Streetwise Opera was set up as an organization to give voice to homeless people, to work with people who had actually suffered that most horrendous indignity of not even having the security of a home. Um, Bridget, tell us a little bit about what you hoped to achieve, to achieve with Streetwise. Thank you. Um, I'll give a brief, very brief history of how Streetwise was founded, if that's okay. Um, it was actually set up by Matt Peacock, who is now our artistic director, um, in around about the year 2000, who had the unusual dual career of being an opera critic and a support worker in a night shelter at the Passage, which is a day centre and night shelter just down the road near Victoria Station. And at that time, a politician was quoted as saying that the homeless are the people you step over on your way out of the opera house. And this ignited a bit of a debate in the shelter and about what homeless people need and how they're seen and how actually what they need isn't just practical stuff and how the public view them is matters. Um, and the residents turned to Matt as the opera expert and said, what if we were in the opera? So he put on a project which is a production of The Little Prince in the Limbury studio at the Royal Opera House. And it was phenomenally successful. Lots of people came. The participants all got a huge amount out of it. And Matt thought, great. And then they all said, well, what's next? So Matt thought, well, maybe I'm onto something. It became a charity, Streetwise Art Approach, founded in 2002. We're now uh, working in five cities across England with weekly singing and acting workshops and other activities for people who've experienced homelessness and other members of the community. Um, and we also put on productions involving our performers alongside professionals. We recently staged a production of The Passion in Manchester with The Choir of the Sixteen, which was broadcast on BBC Four. And we also work increasingly internationally with arts and homelessness initiatives around the world. And really what we're trying to do with our work is both increase well-being, which has been talked about a lot today, and social inclusion for the people who take part, and also to create work that's of real artistic quality. And we very much believe that the work we make is of value and of meaning because of all the people who take part in it, not despite them. And, I mean, at one level, you think, take homeless people, put them together with opera, it's completely mad. But what, what has been your experience of, of that in, in practice? Um, completely extraordinary. And, yes, it's not an obvious thing to do. I very much enjoyed the quote from Satish about realism, because we're certainly not realists at Streetwise Opera, not in the staff team and our performers, I don't think, really are either. And every day we think of impossible things to do and extraordinary things to do, and together we make them happen. And I think the fact that it's not an obvious thing to do, that opera scene is very an elitist art form, um, is almost the secret of the success of the company, because actually for the performers who take part, and Marianne can say more about this, but... I think often opera's daunting. A lot of people haven't done it before, so actually everyone's on a level playing field. And when they're given the opportunities to do it and the high expectations, actually they rise to meet them and they think, what else can I do? And for the public, it shows actually the potential and achievements of people who've experienced homelessness and others rather than their needs and problems. Fantastic. Thank you, Bridget. Um, let me come to you, Marianne. Um, you're one of the performers in Streetwise. Um, I, I have a temptation to kind of ask you um, from a purely human perspective what you make of what you've heard here today. Um, well, it's extraordinary, isn't it? I mean, first of all, how privileged we are to be able to be gathered here and um, especially for myself to have this conversation with you because um, I looked up prosperity on Google, on the etymology, and um, it said um, to be in a state of prosperousness. And then I thought, 
I feel very prosperous right now to be talking with all of you, but then when I go home and meet all my problems and the car won't start and I don't have money for something, I don't feel prosperous. So it, it's very much a state of being for me. But what, what's, I've forgotten your question probably on meandering, but what, what's happened with Streetwise is that it makes me think of that book by, is it um, Jonathan Bark, A Bridge Across Forever and Jonathan Livingston Seagull? And it makes, Streetwise for me, my personal experience, is that it's created that bridge across forever because I didn't know I had a vision. And that's the thing about what I felt about my state of prosperity when, it, when I lost all vision, even though I never really had it, is that you can't imagine what it can be like to be prosperous. Here, I'll give you a million pounds. It's like, oh, what am I going to do with it? It can be quite frightening. If you don't know what it is, it's terrifying. And then, you, and then I heard, overheard somebody say, um, can you imagine a world without money? Oh, that's really terrifying. What would we do? I mean, I'd count credits, but then it's still money, isn't it? And so it's, it's this bridge to, to, to a vision of something. And people who don't have it, they don't have the vision. And Streetwise helps you have that vision. It, it shows you here, take this step, open your mouth, make this note, now try it a bit higher or lower. And it becomes real. The vision becomes real. So much so that I can get really bolshy with all you lot now if I wanted to and say all kinds of things because Tim here has got the microphone. <laughs> but it, but it, it, I mean, to be honest, it's not just the microphone. What you're describing is actually the practice of being engaged with these yeah. wonderful people who we're about to see. Please do come in. Um, and, and creating something, in the words of Satie. Voice, the, the thing is, collectively, we aren't strong. When you hear us individually, you can, you can see, you know, my friend said, don't give up the day job, you know. And I said, well, I'm not hoping to sing a solo at the Royal Opera House, but you can ask me. And, um, but the thing is, collectively, we're strong. And, 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 but the untrained voice, I think when you hear us, each voice has a character, and each voice is a true being of their expression. And I think this, if anything, the most extraordinary, and you'll see, heartwarming and moving, is when you hear everybody has a voice, and it's so wonderful to treasure it, no matter how you express it. Marianne, thank you very much.
Uh, Streetwise Opera, thank you very much. You can see from the reception how much that was appreciated, how much it hit some of the points that people throughout the afternoon have been talking about. Um, the honesty that comes from engaging as a business with a sustainability agenda, the sheer integrity of a politician standing up almost single-handedly for some of the issues that Caroline does, the enormous humanity that Satish and that Rowan brought to that conversation and um, this very, very touching, very moving performance from Streetwise. Thank you guys very much indeed. I've given all of our speakers that present of a tree because I wanted to be absolutely clear from the first that the endeavor that we're engaged in is an investment in the future and that it, it requires nourishment and nurturing, the kinds of qualities that Satish and Rowan were talking about. But there's a funny little anecdote to that story. When I was looking for trees, I found a company uh, which was absolutely committed to conservation who had only a matter of a few years ago decided that they were going to create organically farmed and nurtured trees as presents to give people. And here's the funny bit. In the last 12 months, they made 350% growth. <laughs> it is possible for some things to grow and to flourish in the kind of economy that we're talking about. A, an economy of care and craft and culture, an economy in which the economy is working in the service of people, a prosperity in which the future matters. Ladies and gentlemen, over the next few years, CUSP will want to engage with you on all of those questions and more. But just for now, um, many thanks to the organizers here. My sincere thanks to um, Julianne, to Gemma, to um, Kirsty, to Alad, to Ian, to all of those who have worked behind the scenes, Sue, Kate on the desk earlier. Um, my thanks to our speakers, to Jane Elliott, to Karen Hamilton, to Caroline Lucas, to Rowan Williams, to Satish Kumar, and many, many thanks to Streetwise Opera and to all of you for participating in this event. We have a little in the way of refreshment. We hope you'll stay around uh, tonight, and we very much hope you'll stay around also over the next five years to engage in this debate with us. Many thanks again.